just that. Welcome to Modern Aikidoist Podcast. Please help by liking, subscribing, and sharing this podcast if you're watching this on YouTube or BitChute. These are all free and help out a great deal. Word of mouth is how shows like this reach more people who are interested. Another way you can support this podcast is by way of a PayPal tip jar. You can leave a donation of any amount you like or set up a monthly donation just like Patreon or Subscribestar. Only I don't make you pay for my content. I only invite you to contribute. There's a link in the description. I sincerely appreciate your interest and support. The martial arts world cries out for leaders, and usually those are martial artists who are both highly skilled and innovative. I think their abilities are important, but what really makes highly skilled martial artists special is an innovative approach to the art. They take it past where they found it and make it even more effective and potent. This makes sense as any art is a living thing, not merely a set of techniques to be memorized and performed. I see martial arts as much like music. Music itself has a fairly set structure, but musicians for centuries have evolved music constantly. There are good musicians and there are superb ones, even some with not much talent at all, but music continues to change and evolve as time passes. Sometimes an extraordinary talent comes along and brings a new perspective to it and shakes everything up. Bruce Lee was such a talent. I think Bruce was a once-in-a-generation phenomenal talent, and I think more than likely Osensei was too. By all accounts of those who worked with each of these men, they were extremely impressive martial artists. The innovations Bruce Lee brought to the martial arts world is remarkable. He is most widely remembered for his work in movies and TV, but I think where he did his best work was in evolving past the art he was originally taught, Wing Chun, and developing his own expression of martial arts. I use the term expression instead of style or art because he tended to view it in that way. He would say that each person should explore what works for them, rather than what most martial arts gurus tell their students, which is to follow along and do technique as they are shown. Bruce Lee's influences are easy to spot and identify. What of Osensei's innovations? These are a little harder to identify. Like Bruce Lee starting with Wing Chun, it is pretty clear that Morohai Ueshiba started with Daitaru Aikijujitsu. He went on from there to evolve what he taught into what was later called Aikido. What are the differences of the two remarkable martial artists? I think this is a significant question. First, what they had in common. They both decided to go their own way and explore their art as they desired. Neither were content with merely continuing with their instructor's classes in the hopes their teacher would keep filling their cup. The major difference I can tell is that Bruce Lee left no stone unturned looking for effective tools to add to his repertoire. He advocated cutting away what was not useful. It is said that the curriculum for Daitoru Aiki Jiu Jitsu was immense, and that Morahai removed much of the more complicated and intricate techniques from that curriculum to create the foundation of the Aikido curriculum. What is not apparent with Morahai's development of his art is the same broad approach that Bruce used. Perhaps Morahai adopted techniques, strategies, and approaches from other arts, but I think these were fairly minimal. It appears the majority of his innovation came in the form of simplifying the art that he was taught in order to suit him. I do think he brought a very high level of technical proficiency to the art, to his great credit. The subtlety of power and leverage he advocated and demonstrated was amazing, and for that alone he deserves tremendous respect. It seems Morahai's contribution to his art came mainly in the form of making Daito Ru smoother and more subtle. There's some dispute about the idea that Aikido is merely a softer form of Daito Ru Aiki Jiu Jitsu. Students of Osensei who were uke for him have commented about how soft and subtle yet powerful his technique was. His touch often left them wondering if they were touched at all, yet they wound up being thrown. This is not a testament to a significant reorganization of the Daito Ru curriculum as much as it is an extraordinarily high level of skill in applying those techniques. People with such skill are found in all martial arts, although such talent is rare. It is not unique to Aikido to have someone so skilled in their art that they perform effective and powerful technique almost effortlessly. Bruce was a physical specimen, and his strength and flexibility alone made him able to do things most people, athletes included, cannot do. It's also said that Morahai was a physical specimen, especially in his younger years. Even older, it is said that he was extraordinarily strong. A major difference between these two remarkable men is what they left us. Morahai crafted a curriculum which seemed to fill in the gaps between Judo, Jiu-Jitsu, 
sumo, and karate. It makes sense to avoid teaching principles of these other arts, particularly when most of your students already have a strong base in them. If one wanted to be technically precise, Aikido is a type of jiu-jitsu. It is Morihai Ueshiba's expression of Daitoru Aiki Jiu-Jitsu, to be exact. The jiu-jitsu I listed earlier was addressing the more broad jiu-jitsu in general, which Aikido augments. Bruce, on the other hand, wiped the slate clean and built his art from the ground up. It did not rely on prerequisite knowledge or skill in any other art. I think this was a much better approach for the future development of Jeet Kune Do. In later years, JKD would not be looked at as an art which only contained a small subset of useful fighting skills, which must be augmented with other martial arts training to be effective. Aikido is widely known to be a great art, but incomplete since there are vast sets of martial arts skills which are entirely absent in the curriculum. There are dedicated Aikidoka who insist that Aikido is all one needs to be a complete martial artist, but I think this is very easy to disprove. I believe, with no disrespect intended for Osensei, that he simply didn't address the curriculum of Aikido, at least not to the remarkable degree Bruce Lee gave to his curriculum. Instead, Osensei left that alone and his students had to take that on themselves. The most notable are Koichi Tohei, Kenji Tomiki, and Gozo Shioda. There are others, of course, and it's not my intention to overlook anyone. The main problem with this approach is that if you delegate this organization of curriculum out to several people, they will likely all come up with a different approach, which indeed they did. This sponsors political division, and that's exactly what happened. I wonder how Aikido would be different had Osensei crafted a curriculum which was as clear as the one Bruce Lee did for his Jeet Kune Do. I wonder if Aikido would have become more limited in scope or not have shifted away from being a practical martial art as it has. Currently, the Aikikai is trying to assert itself as the one true Aikido, but there are far too many other organizations for it rightfully to make that assertion. Therefore, any curriculum they organize is hampered by the limited influence over Aikido instructors and practitioners who are not under their authority. Due to the nature of the martial arts community itself, I don't think the Aikikai has much sway over what dojos and instructors teach anyway. It is interesting to note what happened to the predecessor arts once Aikido and Jeet Kune Do became popular. Here is another similarity between the two arts. They both became more popular and widespread than Daitoru Aiki Jiu Jitsu and Wing Chun, and by a very large margin. Today, it is very difficult to find Daitoru or Wing Chun instructors or dojos. Bruce Lee had the popularity of being a movie and TV star going for him. But I think the innovative nature of Jeet Kune Do played a major role in that too. Morahai wasn't the media sensation Bruce Lee was, but he clearly had a star power effect due to his remarkable talent. I think Aikido became popular partly because it was simplified, although there are more factors at play than just that. It helps that he made a concerted effort to spread the art. One way he did this was sending Koichi Tohei to the United States to spread Aikido outside of Japan. It seems that Bruce was similar in his passion to spread the Chinese martial arts outside of the closely knit Chinese community. There are stories of the venerable masters of Wing Chun who told Bruce not to teach anyone who was not Chinese. Perhaps the elders within Daito Ru held similar attitudes about teaching non-Japanese. This would make sense and be consistent with how the Japanese tended to view martial arts and letting out what they had viewed as the powerful secrets of their culture. It's widely known that Japanese and Okinawans were not terribly happy about teaching Americans just after World War II, and although they did, they did so begrudgingly and often left out major parts of their arts. It seemed Morihai was more interested in spreading Aikido to other cultures than he was in concealing it, the same way that Bruce was in teaching Chinese martial arts to Westerners. Both men innovated their arts to suit them. They both went on to grow their arts in their own systems, each of which came to have its own name and brand identity, which was completely separate from its parent art. Now I come to the real question I posed at the title of this podcast. What if Aikido had Bruce Lee? The reason I chose Bruce Lee for this question, and not another Morahai, is that Aikido really doesn't need what Morahai did to Daito Ru, that being, boiling it down further and removing techniques from it. If anything, Aikido needs what Bruce Lee brought to Wing Chun, the thorough examination of everything Aikido currently is, and the adoption of other efficient and effective means to end violence. 
There are fantastic tools which other arts use that fit the stated goal of Aikido, which is to end violence and establish harmony. I realize that statement brings up a very deep subject about what Aikido's overall goal and method is. Let's suffice to say that Aikido, as a martial art, is about ending violence swiftly and with as little harm as possible to all involved. What if Aikido had an innovator who took an approach like Bruce Lee did? First, I think some would view such a person as a blessing, and others would view them as a curse. Arguments would likely ensue about whether outside techniques were needed or not, and the traditional crowd would get very upset at the very thought of having to change anything or try new things. I'm sure this description would accurately describe the traditional Wing Chun community back when Bruce was hard at work sharpening and honing his martial art. Without a doubt, a sense of pride over what Wing Chun was at the time got in the way of many practitioners seeing that it could be better. Bruce saw it, but few others did until he did the work and showed it to them. Even then, many rejected his innovations. I think something similar would happen within the Aikido community as well. What would happen in time, though? I think that an Aikido-based art which brought in other efficient techniques and a more well-rounded approach would result in growth. Aikido practitioners in search of becoming more well-rounded martial artists would gather together and start building together. They would learn from one another and improve their Aikido rather quickly. I think such an art would be far more appealing to new students than Aikido is currently. It's pretty clear that Aikido is on a downward trajectory in terms of appealing to prospective students who are in search of practical skills. I've found that people respond positively to the idea that Aikido is about learning to end fights. What is not appealing is the lack of realistic or practical practice, as well as long-winded philosophical speeches which amount to merely running away from violence. These turn people away once they experience them. Many Aikido practitioners already cross-train in other arts, which is great. What would help Aikido a great deal is to start integrating more of that training into its curriculum. I've done this myself, and I can tell you that students enjoy it a great deal. They really like feeling that Aikido is teaching them to be well-rounded and capable, instead of imparting small morsels of martial arts skills, and that they have to shop around for others that they are missing. In looking forward into the future, Aikido can innovate and become more well-rounded, or not. Some, including myself, are doing it already and will continue to do so. It may just be that if we are successful, there will be two types of Aikido which are widely known. Traditional Aikido will be viewed like Wing Chun came to be once Jeet Kune Do became popular. It will be viewed as outdated and antique, with practitioners being far more interested in a more modern and practical art. I rather suspect this will be the outcome. After all, Wing Chun had its hardcore traditionalists who thought Bruce was insolent for straying from the curriculum and was insulting it by saying that it could be better by changing it. I've heard quite a few Aikido practitioners convey the same attitudes about Aikido. Where will that head into the future? I have no crystal ball, but history seems pretty clear, and it's in favor of the innovators. The ones who adopt and evolve emerge on top. Those who cling to old, outdated ways wither and their art becomes marginalized. For anyone who may think that innovating in art is insulting, remember that Morahai himself stated that Aikido will always change and evolve. It's extremely ironic to me that those who hang on to his every word seem to overlook that statement in their zeal to copy what he did. What Bruce Lee had was an extraordinary focus to improve his art, which he did largely by himself. He was relentless about his pursuit of excellence. The result of his efforts was an evolution of Kung Fu which was modernized and it became very popular. Although part of its popularity was due to his fame, I believe it has stayed popular since his passing because of the innovations he brought into the art. Imagine what Aikido could grow to be if it modernized in a similar fashion. We can sit and wait for a Bruce Lee to emerge from the Aikido world, but I wouldn't hold my breath. Rather than waiting around for the once-in-a-lifetime phenomenal talent, I think it would be far better to collaborate with others who are interested and are already working on their own innovations. I'm very interested to get together with such people although with the current virus crisis, it's impossible. I don't believe in letting anything stop you, so another tactic is necessary. I'd like to start interviews for this podcast with instructors who are innovating Aikido. I think other practitioners and instructors would love to hear what you're doing, how you got started, what influences you adopted, and what results you've been getting. If you're interested, please contact me either through the comments or through the Spirit Aikido website to start setting up an interview.
Let's innovate together and see if we can help one another out. What do you think? Please share your ideas in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube or BitChute. Or go to the Facebook group Aikido the Marshall Side and post a comment. The Spirit Aikido Online program is now live and there are more than 60 videos in the program, with new ones added every few days. Subscribers get access to video training and mentoring to techniques and training methods I've adopted from other martial arts to make my Aikido more practical. There's a link in the description section. I invite you to check it out. I always enjoy hearing from listeners of the show, whether through comments or questions. Thank you all for sharing your interest. Enjoy your training.